want to get back to that breaking news we've been following this morning. As we've been telling you, Aaron Hernandez has been found dead in his jail cell. And our Sean Chayabat had been covering this, the right. trial Most for weeks. Trial. Yes, the double murder trial for weeks. And Sean, he, uh, you know, when we saw him in the trial, when the verdict came down, uh, he showed uh, signs of joy in terms of uh, him getting off on the most serious charges. Yeah, he did. He, he broke down in tears. And, you know, we assumed that those were tears of joy because this was a six-week trial. It was uh, very emotionally intense, uh, not just for him, but for everybody who was witnessing this trial. Uh, but throughout most of the trial, he was very even-keeled. His emotions were tempered. Uh, it, if he were throughout this trial, didn't really see it until the very end. Uh, and at no point did we see that he was having a hard time. He would come into court every day uh, with a smile on his face. He would uh, greet his uh, attorneys and uh, usually give them a big handshake or a hug with a very large smile. And if he saw somebody in the courtroom in the audience uh, that was there for him, usually his fiance Cheyenne Jenkins Hernandez would be sitting there. They would always lock eyes. They would always uh, greet each other with a well, you know, a smile and a hello. It wasn't any uh, sense that he was struggling throughout any of this trial and then to be acquitted at the very end. Obviously, uh, this was a huge relief for uh, him and his family. He was also looking forward to an appeal in the Odin Lloyd case. So he had been acquitted of these double murders and things were perhaps looking up for him. His attorneys, his defense team, uh, looking forward to working on that appeal as well. So, Sean, obviously there's no way to know what was going on inside Aaron Hernandez's head. We can only be observers from the outside looking at what we see of his emotions. To you, being there in the courtroom, no signs of this possibly coming. And even on, in one of the last days on the trial, he actually got to see his daughter. His daughter was there in the courtroom. I believe she's four years old. Any kind of indication that maybe... Cheyenne had brought her in that I don't even want to say that this could have been a goodbye, but was there any indication to anyone? Uh, no, uh, not to any observers that were in that courtroom. Uh, uh, Cheyenne Jenkins, um, Eric Hernandez's fiance, uh, did bring their daughter, Aziel, uh, to the courtroom on one of the final days uh, of, of this trial. It was incredibly emotional. Uh, seeing daughter there, um, the daughter had mentioned that uh, to her mom that she wanted to see her dad. Um, we knew that they had gone to the prison and um, that they had been able to have visits uh, before uh, father and daughter. Um, but then to be actually in the courtroom in that type of setting uh, and to uh, see her dad and not be able to go and hold her dad, not be able to say hello to her father, that obviously was um, heartbreaking uh, that the child, you know, was, was wanting to go across the courtroom bar there uh, and obviously couldn't. It was difficult to watch that. Um, but as far as seeing any other emotion beyond that type of father and daughter bond, um, uh, it was no sense that he was uh, having a hard time. Uh, he really held up well throughout all of this trial. So this is absolutely shocking. You mentioned the appeal for his uh, his first uh, uh, murder trial. Uh, obviously, uh, that being set aside, he is uh, he was facing life in prison for the rest of his life. That's true. He was, uh, and, and this is something that uh, you know the the acquittal of the double murders of Sofia Furtado and Daniel De Abreu uh, was uh, bittersweet, perhaps because uh, every he would wake up in prison. Uh, be carted by Department of Corrections officials uh, up into the Suffolk Superior Courthouse uh, and then back again to the Sousa Baranowski prison every day. And that would be his life. So the appeals process, uh, again, also down the road, um, we don't know what would happen in that appeals process. Obviously, his uh, defense seems hopeful that uh, you know, obviously having him acquitted on these double murders, uh, that they would be on the ball and be able to uh, push that appeals pr process forward. But uh, no indication as to whether uh, his life would change, whether he would ever leave um, life in prison for the Odin Lloyd case. Sean, the issue of 
possible remorse. We do understand that, yes, he was acquitted of this double murder in Boston South End in 2012. That was the most recent trial. But then you also have this man who is a convicted murderer, convicted in the murder of Odin Lloyd. That one happened in 2013. <clears throat> Is there any sign that possibly seeing the victims' families in the courtroom every day, day in, day out, the emotions on their faces? Were there moments when the victim's family locked eyes with Hernandez at all? You know, if he made any eye contact with them, at no point did he let it be known to anybody else in the audience. Uh, they sat there front row, uh, the first, in fact, two rows, those victims' families filled, uh, and they were there day in and day out. Uh, there wasn't a day that they missed in that courtroom. Uh, they wanted to see justice. They truly believed that Aaron Hernandez was the person who pulled the trigger, not anybody else, despite what the defense team had said. The defense team had blamed it on another person, Alexander Bradley. Uh, but they truly believed that Aaron Hernandez was the trigger man, the person who killed their uh, their sons and daughters, uh, their son and their two sons, Severo Furtado and Dan de Abreu. The question, though, is whether or not Aaron Hernandez ever uh, would feel any remorse. Uh, you'll remember back in the Odin Lloyd case, after um, he was convicted, uh, he, he mouthed, you got it wrong, uh, to the jury. And so the question at that point, we knew that he felt like he was innocent, even back in the Odin Lloyd case. So...